People who have been catfished, how did you catch on that you were being lied to? Story 1. I met this Welsh girl on 4chan that was into a lot of the same bands as I was, liked the same comedians as I did, and shared a lot of my political views. She was really awesome, and we stayed up all night talking about anything and everything. We went on to spend a good 6 to 8 hours almost every single day, talking pretty much constantly for the next 3 months. She was amazing. Really funny, had really interesting opinions on a lot of things, introduced me to a ton of new music and films, and was just generally a really lovely person. I was incredibly depressed at the time, and had just dropped out of college the year prior due to ever-increasing anxiety and an inability to function in public. She was the only person I had ever felt genuinely comfortable talking to, and I was completely fascinated by her. I looked forward to waking up every day just because I enjoyed her company. We'd stay up all night talking and watching TV shows, and I had genuinely started to fall for her. Then one night she said goodnight, and we'll talk tomorrow like normal, and I headed off to bed. The next day, she didn't come online. A few days went by, and I hadn't heard from her at all, and I started to get really worried. I started checking the news and obituaries in her town, but found nothing. I went a little bit mental at this point, and couldn't eat or sleep properly for weeks on end. I had no idea what the heck was going on. I genuinely thought I might have completely made the whole thing up, and that I was seriously mentally unwell. I thought of her and what could have possibly happened every single day. The anxiety and stress this caused me actually made me physically and mentally ill. This went on for months, and I got worse and worse, eventually leading to a full-blown nervous breakdown. Not going to go into details on that, but eventually I became functional again, and a few months down the line, I decided to look into her a little further to see if I could figure out what had happened and get some closure. I came across a girl on a social media site whose pictures she had stolen, and from there I began to unravel everything. I am actually doing fairly well now, and I feel a lot healthier than I have in a long, long time. It's weird, but I still think of her from time to time, and despite knowing full well it was either a guy or someone entirely different from the pictures, I still get quite sad, knowing I'll never get to talk to them again. And despite it really messing me up for a long time, I'm better for it. I just hope they're doing okay too. On 4chan? Well, there's your problem. Tough luck, though. Story 2. I was probably 19, very bad with women, very into role-playing on things called muxes. Think a role-play-centric, all-text MMO. Met a girl on one of the muxes. She was a senior in high school. I had just graduated, and we started hanging out online, which went to let's call and talk about the plots we're running slash are in, which became I love you in a couple of weeks. It was a lot of fun. I scanned my junk. She scanned hers. We sent it to each other. We'd sit on the phone and laugh about stuff until like 3 a.m. or whenever her dad would come in and tell her to hang up. She's the first girl I ever did it with over the phone. I still get a weird tingle when I see girls in videos playing with themselves in the bathtub. This is all before camera phones, so all I had to go on was my imagination. Well, calls start slowing down, then the letters stopped getting responded to. Eventually, she just stopped talking to me altogether. About then, I started putting the pieces together. How her pictures were always like some girl in a crowd, or some girl's school photos, or how all my mail came back returned to sender until she gave me a new, completely different address. The signs were all there. I was just willfully ignoring them. I think there probably were some feelings on her end. My theory is that she was a lot younger than she was claiming, and I was talking a lot of nonsense about her moving to my state so we could be together. I think she got scared, or her parents found out she was talking to an older man and she cut contact. The romance seemed too directional. I liked making her laugh and making silly plans with her. She seemed to genuinely enjoy my humor and company. But again, she was telling me she was 17, and how hard is it to not laugh at 17 sometimes? So if your name is Roshni, or if you pretended to be a girl named Roshni in like 2000, no hard feelings. Thanks for laying the groundwork and making my current relationship, which has a temporary long distance aspect, a lot easier. And whenever I think about our imaginary son, Spaghetti Bucket, I smile and wish you well. No, that isn't Roshni. May have been contacted by Roshni, not the poster who provided a link to the logs. Am awaiting confirmation. Hello, it's me, Roshni. Let's go bowling. Story 3. Saw a guy, Redfish, with a cute profile picture on Grindr. 
messaged him on the app, never expected a response. He replied really quickly and was really eager to chat. He sent two pictures of his body, but I noticed that his hands were a lot bigger in one. I ignored it because my dong was thinking, but then a random stranger, Catfish, messaged me on Grinder, claiming to be Redfish's friend, how they were really close and go to the same college. I responded politely, just making conversation. Redfish then messaged me later that night asking how I found Catfish. I said he was alright, but I already knew the deal, so I just played along. I just wanted to see how long he could keep this up. I took a screenshot of the profile picture from Redfish's account and Google image searched it, and it was on a ton of tumblers. After a few days of talking to the both of them, and Redfish basically talking about Catfish the whole time, Redfish's account blocked me. So I messaged Catfish to say, Hey, what's up with Redfish? Why did he block me? Catfish says he knows nothing about that, and says he'll ask. Then comes back and says Redfish won't tell him why. Right then, I just replied, One fish, two fish, red catfish. Lame, I know, but I really like Dr. Seuss. Catfish then types one mother of a story of how he's shocked that I would even think he would do that to someone, and that he would never because he's been a victim of catfishing before, to the extent of someone stalking him and having to take out a restraining order. I don't believe it for a second, because catfish is fat and not very attractive in general. Sorry if I sound judgmental. I then told him how I googled the profile picture, and he confessed to all of it. He kept making excuses about how he was tired of being on the sidelines, and he just wanted to not be ignored. The whole time, he just kept making excuses for his behavior, not once feeling like he had done something wrong. The irony there is that by making up a fake persona, his real persona is on the sidelines. He should spend less time making up fake stuff and just start being the things he feels more ballsy showing off. Story 4 not me, but a former guildmate of my mother's from World of Warcraft. He started dating a fellow guildmate, a 20-year-old college student, Syl, from Albuquerque, who not only was a lingerie model, but her parents were super devout Christians and wouldn't let her talk on the phone or video chat or visit or give out her address. She sent him photos that looked like a blown-out call girl from the back page, not a 20-year-old college student lingerie model. This kept up for over a year. He would farm her stuff in-game, give her gold and items, eventually moving up to him sending her real money and items to a P.O. box. The entire guild knew this was going on, and nobody wanted to break it to the poor guy that he was being duped, except my mom. Weeks go by of my mom trying to talk to this poor guy about how Syl might be misrepresenting herself. Nothing gets through. He just thinks that everyone is against them. He comes to America, he's from British Columbia, to attend BlizzCon with a group of us. We took a train from Chicago to LA. The train stopped in Albuquerque. This man wanted to get off the train and not even go to BlizzCon. He had no real address, no phone number, nothing. His plan was to go around to every university in Albuquerque until he found her. We eventually convinced him that was insane, and he should instead message her and get her a train ticket to visit him in LA if she ever responded. She never responded to his request to meet, but instead sent a list of all the stuff she wanted from BlizzCon. Triple XL men's shirts to sleep in and other assorted stuff. He bought all this stuff and then wanted to continue his original plan of going university to university. We eventually sorta talked him out of that and then left him in Los Angeles, where he continued to try to get her to meet up. He flew back to British Columbia a few weeks later, still not having met her. Last I heard, they were still together and still hadn't met after like five or six years. Too long didn't read. Former guildmate has been getting catfished for years by a fat man from New Mexico who is pretending to be a college student, lingerie model, devout Christian. Story 5 Well, I catfished a girl once. Does that count? It was probably the evilest thing I've ever done. I was young at the time and extremely lonely and a broke college student. She was sweet and loving and made me feel like my life was worth living. We met in a Napster chat room. Yeah, you read that right. We just started chatting and immediately hit it off. At the time, I'd never even used AIM or ICQ or any instant message program. I made an account just so I could keep chatting with her. She filled a massive hole in my heart and made me feel that at least somebody cared. But to keep her interest... I had to invent this wealthy, interesting persona who lived in Manhattan, New York City. Over time, the lies just kept getting ever more elaborate and absurd. This went on for months. 
I still feel a huge amount of remorse about the whole episode to this day. Eventually, I felt compelled to tell her the truth. By that point, she had already figured it out on her own and was just waiting for me to fess up. Except, at the time, I didn't know it. We used to chat in the mornings before either of us had to go off to our respective days. One morning in, I want to say November or December 2001, I finally told her the truth about me, in complete detail. I even got a cam so she could see me, and hear me talk in real life, so she'd be able to see and hear and verify everything and know that I didn't want to lie to her anymore about anything. I think she realized how sorry I was and that I never meant to hurt her. She forgave me almost immediately, although I know I still hurt her. We became even closer friends after I told her the truth and stayed that way for years. We started regularly chatting on cam. I even visited her in December 2002. Eventually, we lost contact. Years later, we reconnected on Facebook and then lost contact again when I finally ditched Facebook. Wherever you are, CSS, I hope you're happy and well. Story 6. I actually unintentionally catfished someone. I was playing League of Legends, and this guy added me after we played a game. His English was broken, but I didn't think much of it, and we started to duo together. We did really well, but strangely, he kept referring to me as a she. Again, didn't think twice about it, and I just kept playing with him, but eventually he started to get real creepy, and told me all these things about him. We found out that there was a significant time difference between us, but he would log on at the most ridiculous times for him just to play with me and started to become a white knight. Whenever anyone would trash talk me, pretty normal, he would vehemently defend me and start fights with other team members, opposing players and whatever. Shortly after that, he would start saying, good night, BB, which I thought was bye. So I would say, <laughs> good night, BB, back to him. Then he'd send me hearts, like less than three, and I thought that we were guys being guys, so I would jokingly message that heart back to him. Eventually, he started calling me his girlfriend when he was defending me, and I realized he thought I was a female the entire time. I messaged him after that game and was like, dude, I'm a guy, and he went on a rampage. He started cussing me out, and by the end of it, the reason why he thought I was a female was because of my username and because I used proper grammar and spelling. Just because I didn't use proper grammar here does not mean I suck at it. He'd send me hearts like less than three, and I thought we were guys being guys, so I would jokingly message that heart back to him. This is my favorite part. Story 7. I never brought up the disparity between his pictures because I didn't want to be rude about it, but we didn't have a second date, and he sent me a nasty gram a few days later for rejecting him and never taking him to Pinkberry. The other time was someone I met in World of Warcraft. We had been playing together in the same guild for about a year, and I definitely had a crush on him for most of that time. The guild all exchanged in-real-life pics on our forum, so we all knew what everyone looked like, and I was definitely attracted to him. He would always talk about how he wished we could meet, and I was like, well, why the F don't we then? He was at Ohio State at the time, and I went to RIT in upstate New York. But I didn't have any problem with road trips, so I went for it. When we met, it was, uh, it was pretty obvious he used fake pictures. He smelled terrible, and his apartment was disgusting too. It was like 1am at this point, and I was super tired from the drive, and all I wanted to do was sleep and then go home. He claimed that I couldn't sleep on the couch because his roommate's friend slept there, trying to get me to share his tiny bed instead. I declined and slept on the floor, but he wound up down there with me at one point and kept inching closer. I eventually just slept under his bed because he couldn't fit under there with me and then drove home the next day. Raiding was pretty awkward, but the guild broke up shortly after that. Story 8 My husband was catfished before he and I started dating. He had met a girl on MySpace who was very hot, and he agreed to meet up with her at the mall one day. I guess he described his car or something because she met him out in the parking lot and hopped in the truck and introduced herself, and he thought it was a joke. She either used very flattering angles, or else the pictures that she'd posted weren't even her. It's important to understand that my husband doesn't expect women to be solid 10 swimsuit models. I mean, if you're clean and mostly fit, he'll probably consider you to be moderately attractive, but for this girl, he couldn't find one redeeming quality physically. She was grotesque, and apparently really weird and quite stupid as well. Still, my husband being who he is, he didn't want to hurt her feelings. 
He walked around the mall with her for about 30 minutes before he texted a friend to call him and then made up some frantic story about his friend's car being stolen and needing to go pick him up. He apologized profusely, but blocked her MySpace the second he got home and never tried to date anyone online again. I teased him for a while, we were friends back then, and told him she might end up being really nice if he gave her a chance, but he wasn't interested. He still feels bad for being shallow, but eh, I snagged him a while later, so I'm not too worried about it. Story 9. Started talking to a girl from the internet. Great sob story about parents abusing her as a child, about how her dad is still living with her despite court cases. If only she had something to take her mind off of it. She starts sending obscene messages. Some red flags, but people on the internet are really weird at the best of times, so I'm down with that, given she's 19, or says she is. But hey, I'm paranoid, and check that these people are who and what they say they are as fast as possible. Ask for a verification picture. Person disappears. Person starts posting on a new account, I notice, and pull a suspicious face. Similar looking photos, similar usernames for chat programs, decide that I'd best verify manually by digging around. Google tells me that the girl exists. Google also tells me the girl lives with her grandparents 300 miles from where she said she did. A few databases of fiddlers and lawsuits eventually turn up her dad, who is registered as a fiddler where the girl said she was living. He got out of jail six months ago. Every social media account the girl has was created three to six months ago. All of them use the same set of photos that I eventually find EXIF data for, saying they're from a few years ago. And more amusingly yet, the social media account is sock puppeting on a few websites. Google gives me the email address of the local police station. Story 10. When I was 15 and young with no self-esteem, I devoted all of my time to playing World of Warcraft. I met this cool guy there, and my young brain convinced me I was in love with him. The catch of all catches? He was 21, with two sons, and still living with his ex. And yet I ignored all of that and Skyped with him constantly, as he boosted my self-esteem and told me I was beautiful, even though I knew I wasn't. Then one day he doesn't sign on to the game or Skype. Days pass, weeks pass, and I'm getting desperate. I couldn't even vent to anyone, I had to keep it a secret. Then one day he signed back on and completely changed. He told me he got into a car accident and couldn't remember anything, not even me. I stuck with him, trying to jog his memory. In the end, his ex was trying to rekindle the relationship, and she decides she wants to watch him play World of Warcraft, so he can't talk to me when she's watching. After a few weeks of that, he blocked me on everything, and I became a manic mess. To this day, I still can't figure out what changed, but it messed me up for a long time. I think the 21-year-old me still doesn't want to believe that it was all a lie, and he'll unfortunately always be my first love. Story 11 Okay, so I actually had this happen to me recently. I was using a dating app and started talking to this girl. She had five photos on there, two of her and three group photos. Nothing surprising for a girl on a dating site. We agreed to grab coffee, and I arrived early and sat outside, and this girl walked up to me and said hello, introduced herself as the girl I was meeting, but did not look anything like her. Something was familiar about her, but I couldn't go and take out my phone to check, so I went ahead. We ordered coffee, and I thought about making a break for it right there when she went and put sugar in it, but decided to stay. We started talking, and we picked up on the conversations we were having online, but after about half a cup, I had enough, and it wasn't going anywhere, so I made up some BS excuse and left. Back in my car, I opened up my phone to look at her profile again, and figure out why she looked familiar. She was in the photos. She was one of the girls in the group, but she was using her friend as the main photo. Very weird. Sad part was that she wasn't terrible looking. Boring, though. But not as good looking as her friend. Girl was probably all kinds of crazy or something. Story 12. So when I was a freshman in high school, I was big into Neopets, and had a click I ran with on the boards, and we chatted off-site as well. Two of those people were Shelby and Adam, same age as me more or less, and dating. Adam had a sister, Kelsey I think, who was also in the clique. Well, it came to pass, as internet relationships do, that Shelby and Adam broke up. And Adam and I started talking and dating. Shelby gave us her blessing. We shared pics, he was a typical emo looking kid, which 14 year old me loved. We talked on the phone only once or twice. I was very shy about it, so didn't mind the lack of voice communication. 
At one point, he sent me a YouTube video of him and his friends. There wasn't much talking, and it was all pretty muffled, and it sounded like they were all speaking German. Adam and I broke up, and it was after that the big reveal came. There was no Adam. Kelsey had made him up and been posing as him all along. I asked Shelby about it, and apparently she had found out when they had broken up too. But Kelsey had made her promise not to tell. Gee, thanks. Too long didn't read. Neopets are for good clean fun, not dating. Story 13. Twice, and I didn't find out until I met them. The most recent was from OkCupid. It was the first person I responded back to after signing up, and he seemed really interesting. Decent pictures, great job, sense of humor, and we connected pretty well. We planned a date to get sushi because I had recently discovered my love for it, but joked about how awful I am at using chopsticks. He had spent time abroad in Japan and offered to swoop in and teach me all the skills. I had also been talking about how excited I was that a pink berry opened a block from where I lived and how it was probably my second favorite thing in the world, so I told him I'd take him there too since he'd never had it before. When we met, he was easily like 10 years older than his pictures and probably 100 pounds heavier. I was pretty confused at first, and I wondered if this was even the right person. But he quickly gave me a present, these training chopsticks, that are connected at the top, so I knew it was him. At dinner, I guess I didn't need the chopsticks anyway, because he ate all the rolls and nigiri with his hands and said it was the authentic way of doing it. Story 14 I had a friend who had been stringing along some girl for months and months, until one day he told me about it. We were drunk, and I thought it was funny. That was it. We had a laugh, and I quickly forgot about it. A few weeks later, I'm at his place, and he brings it up again. I wasn't drunk this time, and he started telling how deep this girl was. She said she was in love with him, wanted to move from wherever she lived to live with him. I tried to convince him it wasn't cool, but he thought it was the funniest thing. I saw him about a week later, and when I brought up the subject, he told me he took my advice and stopped talking to her. Cold turkey, just stopped logging into whatever they chatted on. I told him that if she was so in love with him like it seemed, then that wasn't the best way to deal with it, and he agreed. A few more days passed, and he told me he logged back in as his sister and told the girl that he got into a car accident and passed away. The guy turned out to be quite the piece of crap for many more reasons, and I don't talk to him anymore. Story 15. I had a friend back in high school who told us this story a week after it happened at a graduation party. So he had been chatting with this girl from Florida for three years, decides to finally go and visit her for a week after our high school graduation, so he took a plane down and she was going to pick him up at the airport. He arrives and instead is greeted by her mother, who says her daughter is waiting for him back at the house. So he gets his bags and heads for the car with her. Notices a guy sitting in the back seat around his age. Funny, he didn't remember anything about her having a brother. He starts getting a little weirded out at this point. They finally arrive at the house. No girl in sight. He gets angry and has the mother spill the beans. Turns out this lady was using her niece's pictures to talk with him. How he didn't realize sooner, I don't know. Maybe they never talked on the phone, or maybe her voice sounded young. Anyways, he immediately left this lady and her son and spent the night at a hotel and had his parents pay for a plane ticket back home the next day. Story 16. I used to be on Omegle, a chat site, a few times when I was 17 or so. Everyone asked age and gender, male-female, and most of them would disconnect when you said you were a male. So at one point, I told people I was female just to be able to talk to people. Anyway, I connected with a girl, and we had a great time together. We chatted for two hours or so, I believe, before we gave each other our Skype address. I had to create mine in a quick hurry because I didn't have a fake girly Skype address that matched my fake name. We went on to chat almost every day, just for fun. And even though I knew I was lying to her by being a girl, I still had some fun, but I really felt guilty for lying to her. And I knew we couldn't meet in real life, even though we lived close to each other. One day, she confessed that she was lying to me about something. That thing turned out to be that she was a guy as well. We kept in contact, and we had a great time together, and we actually met each other once. He passed away two years later, though, but still, good times. Story 17 About 10 years ago, I started chatting with a guy in one of the Yahoo chat rooms. We had only been chatting for a few weeks, when suddenly he disappeared offline for about two weeks. I was so worried, but then his sister contacted me and told me he'd been in a terrible motorcycle accident. 
He was in ICU, but she kept in touch with me to let me know how he was. After about a month, he got back online and we talked every day. We traded pics and eventually I got on the webcam to say hi. He couldn't do the same because of some issues with his computer. We talked like this for nearly three years. It was around this time that I realized his sister was actually him. It didn't matter though. I was besotted with him, and I mean totally head over heels. Then one day he just disappeared. His profile was deleted, all his accounts were gone, and I have not heard a single word from him since. I still have absolutely no idea who he or she really was, and it messed me up for a long time. I still think about it at times. I would do anything to know the truth. His wife found out. Story 18. I was desperate. I'm sure that's how a lot of these stories go. Suddenly, a hot blonde is messaging me on OkCupid, and I have no power to say no. The brain in my pants was in charge. So we exchange emails to swap nudes. She goes first, and holy mother of God, she's hot. I have a coworker watch my counter so I can step away and get things. Plump. And she wants me. No way. I'm wanting to see the lower half at this point. But she says she needs another one of me. No problem. What of? My, my butthole? What? That's a little off. Yeah, no thanks. Something else? Nope, that's all she wants. Of course. She makes sure to let me know I shouldn't be embarrassed if it's hairy. That's when it hit me. I'm sure there are girls that have a fascination with men's brown stars. I mean, it's the focus of most modern corn. But I cannot fathom anybody that is okay with a mangy bottom mane. So I go back and look at the nudes she sent to re-verify that it matches the profile pictures. When they're a good match, the faces are just ever so slightly different. Too long didn't read, don't trust butt stuff. Story 19. Well, my stupid story. I met this girl on World of Warcraft back in the vanilla days. We read together, quested, whatnot. Well, she gave her number. Her name was Alex. So off and on, we talked. Then we just kind of stopped. But last year, we started talking again. Well, I was interested, of course. So after a year of us kind of dating, she was sending pics of who I thought was her. Boy, was I wrong. So me being a dude, I ask for nudes. She sends me pics of some random girl online. Go figure. I was like, okay, she's nervous. Well, then I was scrolling on Instagram and saw a picture that she sent me. It's some famous Instagram girl. I felt freaking stupid. I called her out. She fought it. I fought harder. She finally gave up. Her name wasn't even Alex. Looked like a troll, too. I was planning on paying for her to see me a few weeks from then. So, yeah, Jordan, if you read this, screw you. I don't care if you dye your hair, you'll always be a little redhead witch. Story 20. On Plenty of Fish, women frequently post dishonest photos. Ones that hide their fat or are a couple of years out of date. Sure, you meet the real girl on the other side, but I've felt catfished a few times. Second worst time, the girl had a very misshapen gut. From the shoulders up, she looked normal, but she must have been at least 350 pounds. When I showed up, she cried. I bought her a nice dinner, then politely made my way home. Worst time, I did not recognize the girl. Her photos were pre-Mets addiction. She had dyed her hair, she had gained significant weight. Once we sat down at the restaurant, she told me that this was the first date that she'd had since treatment for a communicable disease that she'd gotten freaking a random dude. Right after we ordered, she said we should bounce to her place to get high and hook up. I said I was hungry. We ate our meal, she got a little drunk, I turned down her offer to get high and bone. She made a scene in the middle of a shopping mall, and I walked away. Story 21. I officiated the in-game wedding on EverQuest of a good friend, Virtual. I had played with him since beta, and we were quite close on AIM. This is like over 1997 to 2002 or so. We were pretty much the most decked out monks on our server, and our split polling was unrivaled. We were able to clear the best dungeons easier and faster than other guilds' raid groups because we were so in sync. So over like two years, he's really involved with this one cleric chick, a high elf. They exchanged photos, had phone calls, etc. Around year three, we had this big roleplay event. The GMs even sent a couple of items to dress in and read wedding vows. We were pretty well known on the server, having won best of the best tournaments and such, over 200 people crammed into West Commons to attend the wedding. A few weeks later, it turns out she, 
he was arrested for child pornography. It was a 400 plus pound basement dweller in Georgia. The FBI got in touch with my buddy after finding correspondence in the guy's home. Story 22. About six years ago, I found out my brother was a catfish. He had been catfishing this young man in the UK whilst being in America. He had fake pictures, a fake name, but his real phone number, the guy being catfished, we'll call him Lenny, would repeatedly call my brother and leave messages on our house phone. My brother and Lenny often sent each other packages of sweets. Lenny made the decision to come to America to visit, since he's never been. My brother agreed. On the day Lenny arrived in Texas, my brother told him the truth, but never actually met up with Lenny. Lenny tried all week trying to convince my brother to meet him, telling him he just wanted to know who he really was. My brother never showed. Lenny called religiously every day for about a month, trying to get my brother back. I think he really loved him. After that, I never heard from him again. Story 23. About 10 years ago, on the 2 plus 2 forum, there was a huge catfish. It was, and is, a poker forum, but has a very active and close-knit community. It eventually came out that Poker Joe, the very attractive and flirty girl on the forums, who everyone knew, was a guy. When players were meeting in real life, he would make a lot of personal, inside jokes in the threads. Everyone believed that Poker Joe had met most of the other people on the forum in real life. Turns out he was just a nice guy looking to get some poker advice. When people thought he was a guy, his poker post would get ignored like most of the unknowns. When he started posting as a flirty Poker Joe, all of the pros and high-stakes players were lining up to coach him. Everyone was cool about it, and he continued to post as Poker Joe. Story 24. Back in the MySpace days, I ended up getting close with a beautiful girl that I thought was known by mutual friends. We talked every day, all day, and then she told me she had feelings. I would have dropped everything to be with this girl. Then I got a message from a girl who was the actual girl whose pictures had been stolen, holding proof that the person that I'd been talking to was lying. The actual girl was sweet and sympathetic, but obviously wasn't interested. It was tough at first because I felt a bond with her that didn't actually exist. Confronted the catfisher and she eventually owned up, sent real pictures, and said that everything else was real, the feelings and whatnot. She wasn't unattractive either, so if she'd have just been honest, who knows? But I couldn't get past that and cut contact. Story 25 In my sophomore year of college, my friend Carrie, male, 19, met a girl named Kelly in a chat room. They talked a lot and got close. One day, Kelly revealed that her brother beat her up and broke her jaw. Carrie drove to a city a few hours away to rescue her and learned that Kelly was really Kenny. Kenny tortured Carrie into giving up all his passwords and then red-rummed him and left his corpse in a field. Then Kenny impersonated Carrie online for several days in an attempt to cover his tracks. He did a bad job and got caught and ended his own life in jail before trial. I realize how all this sounds with all the names being K-E-Y, but it's a true story. You can Google it. It really messed me up for a while. Frick, I was hoping this was fake. Story 26. I met a guy on a dating website. We texted back and forth for three weeks. He seemed to be the perfect guy. He was dating a lot and kept telling me how most of the women he met were much older and heavier than the pictures they posted online. He complained that a lot of people misrepresented themselves online, I was shocked as I was new to online dating and didn't understand why someone would do that. Finally, we set up a time to meet. He didn't look anything like his photos. He was about 30 years older and 50 pounds heavier. It was very surprising and disappointing to say the least. I still don't understand why people misrepresent themselves. It's just a waste of time for both people. Story 27 He claimed to be a U.S. Marines, yet had an extravagant amount of free time to play MMORPGs. Someone here on the internet offered to run his name through the USMC database, and he didn't exist. Well, someone by his name did, but they had been discharged in 1958 or something, whereas this guy claimed to be 21. Good old stolen valor. Similar thing happened in a guild I was in. The leader was supposedly a Canadian soldier with UN forces fighting warlords in Africa, It went so far that he got chemical burns in his lungs and sounded like heck on voice chat. Turns out it was all bullcrap. He had used a voice changer to sound raspy. It was weird, and the guild disbanded over it. Story 28 
It wasn't me, but my best friend who was being catfished. We were hanging out and he told me about this guy he had been talking to for a while and was now dating. He told me this long, ridiculously convoluted story about his boyfriend's life, and then he told me that he had never listened to his voice. That gave me a pretty bad feeling. After some Google image searching, we discovered that my buddy's boyfriend was fake. And so were about half a dozen other people that were somehow related to him. It was pretty crazy. The amount of detail that whoever was catfishing my friend put into that farce was astounding. The good thing is that I got my friend out of there in time. Story 29 Dated this woman for a few months who claimed she was a doctor. I thought, cool, and just went with it. I caught on by her continually talking about how she was going to buy a car. She had claimed she sold her car before moving, claiming she was going to buy me random things, claiming she was going to take me to Vegas, etc., and never delivering on anything. I had suspicions for a while, but what finally provided evidence was looking her up in medical registries. She wasn't listed anywhere. I confronted her, and she kept trying to make lame excuses for anything I asked about. Haven't talked to her since. Story 30. I joined an online pregnancy support forum for women who were all due to give birth in the same month. We got catfished more than once. Women would steal ultrasound pictures and pass them off as their own. And then eventually they would suffer a loss and revel in all the sympathy they received. It was not just done with pregnancy, but also with some of the groups related to post-pregnancy, early childhood forums. It got to the point where anyone who lost a child during pregnancy or afterwards was suspected of faking it until a thorough search made it seem likely that pictures were not stolen from someone else. Story 31 Aw oh man, my story is just so messed up. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I was 19, fell head over heels in love with this guy 4,000 miles away, mutual feelings, randomly stopped liking me, stopped talking, three years later, I did research to try and find him to see how he's doing because I still care for him. Found out the guy I was talking to at the time was actually a girl who now is a transgender guy. Bright side, I found the real guy the photos were of, and he's just so much more charming than the person that catfished me. Story 32 I was talking to a girl I met on Tinder, and while I have on my profile that I'm not interested in being anyone's third, she kept talking about the guy she was currently seeing and how hot he was, and didn't I want to F him with her? I eventually found her Facebook, and his, and his was a real Facebook, while hers consisted of two really fake-looking photos and no actual information. So it became apparent at that point it was the guy just trying to get bi girls to send obscene texts to him. That's actually really, really clever. Frick. Story 33. It was back in the days of RuneScape. I seriously doubt there was a preteen in existence who had a RuneScape account and hadn't been catfished or at least experienced an attempt. I caught them because it was obvious, asking for free crap, being overly girly, etc., and because I have been, usually, unintentionally catfishing people since games with online capabilities give you the ability to choose a female avatar. <laughs> My cousin did that, although she was a girl. She'd pretend to be people's girlfriend for free stuff. In the end, she had like five different boyfriends or something. Story 34 It was when I was a teenager, not too long after the birth of ICQ. I had met this one person in a chat room, and things started to get more and more personal. Not too long later, they eventually broke down and admitted that they had been lying, and that they weren't a young hot girl, but instead a man. The guy seemed really remorseful, and I couldn't bring myself to tell him that I actually wasn't a young hot lesbian either. I don't think anybody was ever what they said they were in those old school chat rooms. Story 35 I unintentionally catfished a guild. I played as a female avatar, pre-voice chat, and I was very, very chatty in the various text chat channels. Well, years later, and I realized that everyone assumed I was a female, even other females in the guild, and I had thought I was just popular, but there was this weird gravitation towards me because of it. When I corrected someone and finally literally said that I wasn't a female, the distance between everyone else and me was palpable. Like, I was pulling some grand hoax. Shrug. Story 36. A few years later, it wasn't anything serious, just this girl sending me pictures when I was 12 or 13, and I sent some back. I logged into my old email when I was around 16, and I looked up the email she used and found out it was this older man who posted up his email asking for girls. 
He sent me pictures of other girls. Piece of crap. Always makes me wonder about these types of people who do this. At what age did they decide to be an absolute creep? Story 37. I talked to this guy, Sean, for months, probably close to a year. Then, poof, gone. It sucked, but oh well. Six months later, I started talking to another guy with the same unusual middle name. He turns out to be Sean's ex-boyfriend, and about 80% of the stuff I knew about Sean was actually about him. He broke up with Sean six months before and took his phone back, and that's why he disappeared. Too long didn't read, met the real-life inspiration for the persona I was catfished with. Story 38. My best friend's father found out when my friend told him. He was in love, but her photos were too perfect, so my friend got some proof together and broke the news to him. He took it well. I was catfished on a dating site. She was way too hot to be talking to me, and sure enough, she was a model in a relationship. Bummer. Story 39. My ex-girlfriend tried catfishing me to test me. It took me about 30 seconds of looking through the profile before I realized that the name was her name backwards. The craziest thing is that she really thought it would work. That girl was bonkers. I realized that the name was her name backwards. Master criminal. Story 40. I really like turkey liver and the next thing I know, someone's yanking me out of the water. I'm gonna fry you up with some okra and hush puppies. Story 41. He sent me pictures of the same girl I was pretending to be. We both had a good laugh about it. Story 42. When she showed up and had a dong, 8 out of 10 would try again. Doesn't matter. Story 43. Failed to send a proof photo or video. There should be no excuse in this day and age. Story 44. She opened the door and it looked like she ate the girl in the picture. Story 45. When I drove to Chicago to meet her, she wouldn't show up. Story 46. Her face looked like the foot of who I thought I was meeting. Story 47. My roommate told me a girl was calling for me. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.